This past year has had a ton of difficult games with a ton of great big battles. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, the 10 hardest bosses from 2019. Starting off at number 10, Chronica from Mortal Kombat 11. Now the Mortal Kombat series is no stranger to difficult bosses. There's Goro, Kintaro, Motaro, Shao Kahn. It's official. You suck. And it's just pretty much every single game and they're all basically the worst. Mortal Kombat 10 might have gone a little easier on us with the not so bad Shinnok, but Netherrealm decided to take off the kit gloves for Mortal Kombat 11 and gave us Chronica. Oh, Chronica. There is so much to unpack about Chronica. It's only a one stage fight, but she is absolutely brutal. She warps around like crazy, hits you with these insanely damaging meteors, and can hit you with an unblockable laser that doesn't just do tons of damage, but it rewinds time and leaves you frozen for a few seconds so she can continue beating up on you. And the pain doesn't stop there. At about two thirds and one thirds health, she'll summon another fighter you have to deal with before she tags back in. And on top of all that, she barely takes any damage from specials and fatal blows. So there's pretty much no way to beat her outside of just getting lucky or getting good. But with a boss this random and brutal, I just stick with luck, honestly. Moving on to number nine, the Matriarch from Gears 5. Now Gears games have always had some kind of weird difficulty spike in them somewhere. They're not usually all that hard, but then you hit a part that's just like brick wall. Like the last boss in Gears 3, remember that? That thing sucked, and well, the Matriarch isn't quite that bad. It's still a hugely frustrating slog of a boss that always makes you feel like you're doing something wrong. All right, so here's the gimmick for this one. It's a really big berserker, the giant muscle brown locust enemies that made an appearance in pretty much every Gears game. To beat this boss version, you're in an icy room with pools of frozen water, and if you shoot the ice under the Matriarch's feet, it'll get stuck for a while. Then you shoot it in the back. Now, it sounds easy, but like, okay, so it takes nearly no damage, and guess how much damage you take? Yeah, if it catches you, you're instantly dead. There are no checkpoints. If you die at any point in this fight, you are going straight back to the start. Even better, after a while, the whole arena starts to fill with fog, making the boss almost impossible to see before it gets you. It's hard, it's frustrating, but I will say one thing about it. It is one of the most satisfying bosses to beat in any recent game. And at number eight, Leshen and the Ancient Leshen from Monster Hunter World. If you're like, what? Hold on a sec. 2018's Monster Hunter World has always been a tough game, but the developers keep making it tougher, with additions like the Iceborne expansion, which buffed up a ton of totally brutally painful bosses, from the original games to new insane heights, but the developers did not stop there. We also got crossover bosses with other series like the Behemoth from Final Fantasy and this year's Leshen from the Witcher series have all brought the hardness. But here's the thing. When it comes to Monster Hunter, everyone's got their own most hated boss, be it the Kirin, the random lightning spewing death horse that loves to stun then one shot you, the ruiner Nergiganti, who's just, I mean, look at this thing, it's a Nergiganti with even more spikes, even more spikes, just to repeat that for emphasis. And then there's the Leshen, which just outside of being a bizarre monster that doesn't have anything like it in the Monster Hunter universe, is just really hard. What makes it so hard? Well, like the Behemoth before it, it doesn't play by the rules. It uses magic to teleport around the environment and summon enemies to constantly annoy you while you fight it. And if you're a close range fighter like myself, then the swarm of birds it summons to surround itself with a damaging aura will drive you nuts. It's just a super chaotic enemy that can force you to completely rethink your tried and true monster hunting strategies, and that makes it one of the toughest of the year. Moving on to seven, Ishin, the sword saint from Sekiro. You can't talk about the hardest boss of the year without mentioning this guy, maybe the ultimate in hard bosses. I think he might be one of the hardest bosses ever. Not just this year, ever. The interesting thing about this dude is that there just aren't any gimmicks. He's got no gotchas or crazy tricks. He's just really hard. If you want to stand a chance at beating this guy, your deflecting abilities need to be on point, but he has so many attacks, so many alternating, very fast attacks that he'll switch between some really slow attacks as well, just to throw off your rhythm. It just takes practice. 
It doesn't help matters that he's basically a four-stage fight. First, you need to take on a previous boss, Genichiro, who is a total pushover compared to the real deal. Then you fight his first form, which is hard enough. Manage to hurt him enough to get him to his second form, and he'll pull out his spear, which nearly doubles the amount of attacks he will perform on you. Get him down to his last form, though, and he's actually not quite so bad. But only if you've mastered the lightning counter, which is also the most awkward and rarely used type of counter hit in the game. There's only two bosses that From has made that I legit thought couldn't be beat. Ornstein and Small. And now this guy, he is no joke. And at number six, Dante vs. Virgil from Devil May Cry 5. Another series known for its very tough bosses, Devil May Cry's version of the Virgil fight is probably the best yet. He's got all his classic moves from Devil May Cry 3, with a few new ones to mix things up. Let's end this, Dante. Just like previous matchups between Dante and his brother Virgil, Virgil is the one dictating the flow of the battle. He tries to bait you to attack him, but it's always safer to wait for him to attack before countering. Because if you just try to rush in, Virgil will absolutely destroy you. It doesn't help that he's got a ton of health, and it'll do crazy amounts of damage to you if you slip up. I don't really have to say a lot about this one. It's just a really good and challenging fight. Maybe the best in the entire series, even. And moving to 5, the Agonizer 9000 from Borderlands 3. They were really wild with the bosses in Borderlands 3, let's just say. There's more than a few of them that felt like they'd be the final boss of any of the previous games in the series, and at least in presentation, this one doesn't seem like that. Near the end of the game, you're sent on a mission to rescue Tannis, the weirdo researcher for some bandits. But these aren't just any bandits, they're pain and terror, you know, pen and teller, the famous magician slash skeptics. Also, they've got a giant robot. It's pure pain. For them being such minor characters in the story, it is crazy how much of a difficulty spike this thing is. It takes tons of hits, shoots saw blades and missiles everywhere in an arena with no cover, sets the floor on fire, and worst of all, has these giant chainsaws that you're forced to either duck or jump over. They do tons of damage, are weirdly hard to avoid, and kill all the other enemies in the arena. So if down, good luck finding a second chance. This thing is hard enough on its own, but that stupid chainsaw attack makes it one of the hardest of the year. And at number four, the Dread Dormammu from Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. This guy isn't one of those bosses just hard. Nope, he's a gimmick boss. A really weird gimmick boss. For a game as normally straightforward as Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, the sky is an aberration in more ways than one, and is the boss people, myself included, had the most trouble with in the game. No, not Magneto or even, you know, Thanos, it's this guy. Here's the gimmick, you can't attack him hand to hand, you have to throw rocks at him. He also summons invincible minions who you can't fight back against when you're trying to throw the rocks. Also, he can only be damaged by standing in this... Bubble? This requires a certain level of precision and, I mean, just look at this arena, it's chaos. You can barely tell what's going on. Good luck aiming rocks at this guy. It doesn't help that he's just generally really damaging, forcing many players to grind levels to even stand a chance against him. Dormammu is just an all-around pain of a boss, definitely one of the hardest. At number three is General Lothar from Wolfenstein Youngblood. He's a crazy Nazi on a jetpack who takes a ton of hits. He summons an infinite amount of soldiers for backup and he flies around the area, bombarding your position from every possible angle. General Lothar, come on down. Saying he's hard almost feels like an understatement. The odds are so incredibly stacked against you in this fight. And it doesn't seem so bad at first. The first phase of the fight takes place in a small room, and it's a gimmick fight where you have to deflect his bullets back at him to deal any real damage. Not the hardest thing. At the second phase, though, everything steps up. Jetpacking around the arena like a madman in combination with his bomber, he can kill you in literal seconds, and the only saving grace is that the arena is covered in health packs. And you'll need all of them. And of course, he's got a final form where he whips out the BFG, which has massive range and can also kill you pretty much instantly. The fact that anyone has beat this guy without first destroying their controller or keyboard is a miracle unto itself. Moving on to number two is Elodie from Wargroove. 
the final boss of this tactical strategy game and spiritual successor to the Advanced Wars series, is crazy tough. Not just because of the insanely disproportionate amount of enemies you have to fight, but for its main gimmick. Every few turns, the boss will mind control one of your heroes. That's bad enough, but remember in War Groove, if a hero dies, it's game over. So you're constantly having to take damage from possessed heroes that you don't want to hurt back because if you kill even one, the hour long battle is over and you've got to start again. Thankfully, the developers decided to add in checkpoints later, but at release, this fight was absolutely insane. And now with checkpoints is merely incredibly hard. And finally, at number one is the Psychiatrist from Katana Zero. We've had some weird bosses on this list, but this one, uh, man. This guy is, I mean, weird is an understatement, but he's also incredibly tough. The Psychiatrist is exactly what he sounds like. He's the Psychiatrist to the bathrobe clad hero. Under normal circumstances, you'll never fight this guy. It's only after performing a number of very specific actions throughout the story that he will get angry enough to attack you, taking some kind of crazy combat drug before he goes full Tetsuo on you. This guy has four phases, tons of crazy attacks, and oh yeah, if you get hit, you die. Thankfully, there's three checkpoints on this guy, otherwise there's probably no way anyone would be able to beat him. I mean, for him being really tough to find and even tougher to beat, we have to give it to this guy as one of the hardest bosses of the year. And you really have to be asking for it for him to go boss on ya. couple of bonus bosses for you. Ukulele's four-stage final boss. I mentioned the impossible lair on the top 10 hardest missions video, but the last boss deserves special mention. Four phases, no continues, no hope. When you steal his mind control hat thing and force him to get hit by his own spikes, it is just the most satisfying thing, period. And finally, DDP 52 Razorback from The Division 2. Another one I mentioned on the hardest mission video, this raid boss is just nuts for how it forces players to fight in such a convoluted and counterintuitive way. I hope you like throwing grenades into tiny vents. It was so hard at release that many console players thought it was literally impossible. Of course, people eventually beat it, but still, if people are complaining that your game is literally impossible, then yeah, it's hard. What's some hard bosses you played this year? Did we cover them? Did you have some special trouble with somebody else? Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. And if you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe, and don't forget to enable all notifications. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconHero. We'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.